Um, so I'm Gareth Price, and I look after the customer experience at um, British Business Bank, specifically startup loans, um, which is a government-backed scheme um, to help businesses furthest away from finance um, access finance in the market. Um, and I've worked with SMEs, um, Val, for about 11 years now, um, working with um, businesses both sort of one to one. So I was a sort of a relationship manager back in my sort of banking time. Um, so I've seen a lot of different um, business customers um, sort of flourish and start and grow their businesses. And it's a big passion of mine to um, to help business customers um, get started and sort of, you know, turn their ideas into uh, make their dreams a reality, if you like. And that's you know, I, I, I wouldn't say anything as lofty as that's, you know, part of my job at startup loans, but I'd like to think, you know, that's what we try and do. Um, and that's me. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Garrett, for being here. Thank you for taking the time to share your expertise. Um, you know, having worked so many years with small business owners, I'm really excited for you to share all your knowledge um, with, with us today. Um, just before we start, um, just a, a quick tour of Zoom for, for those of you who are not too familiar. You've got a toolbox either at the, at the bottom or the top. Um, please use the Q&A to ask all your questions. We will have a lot of time to do Q&As. So make sure you ask Gareth all your questions in the Q&A box. We'll get to those at the end. And also you've got a chat room. If you have any comments, just put that on the chat room. I will put some links of what we're going to discuss into the chat room as well. So make sure make sure that is opened. Um, so I wanted to quickly introduce myself and tell you a bit more as well about Tide before we move on to, um, to, to the questions. Uh, but my name is Valentin Hutchings. I'm part of the team here at Tide. And for those of you who are new to Tide, I'm just going to give you a very quick overview. Um, we are the fastest growing online business current account provider in the UK, and we're used by 400,000 businesses. And the whole reason why we exist is to save small businesses um, time and money when it comes to their business banking. So you can actually focus on growing your business. Um, we have a quick and easy sign up and our app is packed with a huge amount of product that are designed to make your banking life a lot easier. Um, and one that is particularly relevant uh, today is our cash flow insight tools that allows you to access a range of credit option uh, to suit your business, like business loan, business cash advance, or of course, startup loans that we'll talk about a bit later on. Um, and we also have our credit builder tool, which is designed to help small business grow their credit worthiness and open up options uh, for future business funding. So I'll, I'll chat to you a bit later on about how to make sure you stay up to date with what we do at Tide, but also I'll put all the links of the products I just talked about in the chat box. Um, but for now, let's, uh, let, let, let's, start with, uh, let's start with the event. So um, we've both introduced ourselves. We'd love to know, uh, you know a bit more about you watching us um i'm just going to launch the poll to ask you about um how long ago uh, did you start your business so this should be on your screen right now um hopefully you can see it and we'd love for you to 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 take the polls to to let us know okay got a lot of businesses that have been created this year congratulations that's really exciting Okay, I think there's still a couple of you that haven't replied if you, yep, okay, a bit more. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So we've got 44% of businesses that have started this year, 25 in the past year, 13% two to five years, 6% five to 10 years, and we've got a few of you that have started their businesses 10 years ago as well. Congratulations, that's uh, really impressive. Thank you so much for um, taking the poll. I've, I've, um, I've shared um, the findings. Thank you so, so much. It's, it's great to, to, to know you a, a bit better as well. A great variety of, of businesses. Um, so um, Gareth, let's just jump uh, right in. The first question really is, um, can you please tell us about the different types of loans available to small businesses uh, to get their business running? Yeah, for sure. Um, and 
it's a good place to start, Val, I think, because that can sometimes be the most daunting step, really, is sort of, you know, making that decision to take on finance, but then also trying to understand what finance might be right for your business. So I guess I'll probably start, I'll group them together. So it's a bit sort of hopefully a bit clearer. So I'll talk about what I would call sort of marketplace lending. I guess, so sort of mainstream lending. And that's probably the most um, commonly known, talked about, you know, when if, you, if you're new to business and, you know, you don't have a background in investment, you'd probably look at sort of marketplace lending as a starting point. And I guess that there's, there's two types of marketplace lending. So there's the, the business loans, I suppose. So business loans are primarily for, for those businesses that have started up in in the past year for example the startup loan um, scheme that i represent so startup loans are an example of a business loan that can help you with startup costs so that could be sort of purchasing premises it could be you know sort of costs related to getting your company registered marketing all those kind of costs are encapsulated by i guess the business loan and then the other type of marketplace lending is really sort of higher purchase or what they what they call asset finance so that's if you've got a specific purchase a uh, piece of equipment a van something that's very sort of equipment related um, there's also sort of higher purchase and 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 asset finance as well so that's kind of the marketplace lending those are the sort of as i say that normally the easiest to sort of find um and to and to sort of um are also sometimes to apply for as well they more tend to be more structured application processes and then the other type of finance i guess that you have is investment mm -hmm. and again i'll kind of group that that together into sort of you've got venture capital and angel investment as well um, angels tend to be individuals so um, angels tend to be high sometimes high net worth individuals who've you know who'd like to invest in businesses um, and normally they'll invest in, ret in return for a, a stake in the business um, and similarly um, venture capital is it's a similar type of investment process but venture capitalists tend to represent a firm so sort of venture capital firm rather than an individual and again you know they can help invest into your business for a, a stake the benefit I guess for, of that is that you often get um, mentorship or very hands-on support from a, from an angel or from a, a venture capital firm. Um, and they may have a, a sort of agreement, a sort of an agreed sort of KPI that you need to achieve in return for their investment. And they'll kind of coach you and work with you usually to, to achieve that. Um, and then I guess the other sort of types of um, funding are, um, so sometimes you know it, it it's it's bank of mum and dad so sometimes it's not um external finance if you like sometimes it's family finance and and there's sort of you know there's pros and cons to that clearly you know you'd, you'd hope the terms of repayment are um <laughs> are sort of preferable when it's your family but um but equally sometimes it can be very um it can be very troublesome uh, you know and that there's a lot of pressure starting a business having you know taking money from a, a a family member friend relative there's there's often a lot of pressure then to sort of um you know make sure the business is is super super successful and you can repay um so that it, it's sort of you know there's there's kind of there's definitely sort of um pros and cons to sort of weighing up each each type of investment um the the other the, the last thing i guess to talk around as well um which i've i've missed out which is remiss of me which is crowdfunding platforms as well so um you know um everyone will be familiar with the likes of kickstarter and platforms like that and um if you, it normally that's very product investment related so if you've got a sort of mvp a minim minimum viable product you know you, you can sort of gain investment in a product or an idea a very sort of defined idea um and again it's similar to um the other types of investment i've kept it separate because it's more of a digital i think it's it's a newer a newer thing and it's much much more unpredictable in in ways um because you you've got to gain that sort of buy into your product over the internet um you know through through the platform um but also um 
I, I think you can find with that you don't necessarily get the hands-on coaching that you would from an angel investor or a or a VC investor. Um, so lots to think about. What I would say is the British Business Bank has got um, a website, a portal called the Finance Hub. And what the Finance Hub does is it helps you find the most appropriate type of finance for, for your business. So there's questionnaires that you can answer um, that will help kind of direct you to the, the most appropriate or a recommendation of the most appropriate type of finance. And then you can read a bit more about it. And there's sort of ways to sort of access um, more information and, and link into some of this, the schemes and um, some of our partners and things like that. So that might be useful if anyone's wondering, you know, what type of finance do I need to get myself off the ground? Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Gareth. And um, we'd love to know, um, everyone watching us live, let us know um, if you, you know, uh, you know about one type of funding in particular. We were just talking about crowdfunding, right? Has any of you thought about this? Let us know. It'd be very, very interesting to, to have your experience as well. And in terms of, you know, borrowing from families and friends, what we were saying about it being very, it, it could be very stressful, right? So um, this is also um, just to... Um, uh, plug in episode one here. Um, we were um, chatting with our founder, the founder of Thai, George Bevis, about the different ways he founded his different businesses. And he was mentioning borrowing from families and friends. So if you want to get the feedback from our founder of how that felt for one of his businesses, um, you can catch the episode one on, on YouTube because it's, it's definitely a very particular way of, of, of getting uh, funding for your business. Um, just just yeah. a final point I, I would add Val on that is it, none of those are mutually exclusive yeah. so hopefully I haven't I haven't given that impression there it, it is possible to use match funding and as you say you know often it will be a combination of sort of you know could be friends and family plus a loan could be a you know a loan plus a bit of VC so you, you can sort of mix and match types of funding yeah absolutely and everyone's experience is different right I think George was sharing that you know borrowing from friends and family was a bit uh, stressful some some business owners will have wonderful experience with it as well so mm -hmm. that's that's, yeah. that's why if you want to share your experience in the chat box we would we'd love to to hear from you actually talking about hearing from you before we go on to the second question um I was asking on Twitter to our followers um, the other day if they had thought about applying for some form of external finance to get their business off the ground. From the people who actually answered, 36.4% said yes. And um, when we were getting this masterclass ready, Gareth, we talked a lot about um, attitudes towards debt financing. So we are, I'm going to launch a poll, uh, another poll, about... Um, you know, um, what uh, might discourage you from applying for finance? I have launched a poll. If you could, there's a lot of different um, answers. So either fear of rejection, economic conditions, avoidance of debt, COVID-19 uncertainty, lower forecast sales revenue, um, or not knowing where to find finance. Poor credit history as well is one of the, um, one of the, um, um, Paul answer. So great, thank you. I can see a few a few of you taking the poll. If you could, it should be on your screen. So I'm seeing a few of you have have been discouraged for applying for finance because of economic reasons. That's fourteen percent of you. Twenty nine percent of you are saying avoidance of debt. Um, seven percent lower forecast sales revenue. 14% of you don't know where to find finance. 14 of you are saying they have poor credit history. 14% of you are saying it's too expensive. And 7% um, say that the provider seemed reluctant to lend. Okay. I think the most we are getting, Gareth, is 27% are saying avoidance of debt is the reason they got discouraged for applying for finance. I'll just end the ball now thank you so much for, for for taking that i think um i think it's um it's super interesting and also because when we were preparing this masterclass gareth um you mentioned some data from the british 
Business Bank 2021 SME Finance Survey, which find that one in three SMEs are considering applying for some form of external finance in the next 12 months. But um, fear of rejection and economic conditions are the most common reason business owners do not apply. Despite this, eight in 10 SMEs surveyed were successful in obtaining all of the finance required from the first provider. So yeah, Gareth, can you tell us more about the different attitudes you see towards business debt and the, the different fears about taking on debt? Yeah, for, for sure. And, and thank you for, for sharing that insight as well. And <clears throat> that is, you know, as, as well as providing finance, that is part of our role at the British Business Bank. We do sort of produce reports and, and we, we try to share insights into the SME market as well. Um, and, and I think it's a perennial issue, fear of debt amongst um, new business owners and startups pr primarily, but sometimes more established business owners as well. Um, and, and it's really, you know, before I, I go into this, it is a matter of personal preference, of course, as you say, some people have fantastic experiences and, and sometimes others don't. But I think what we've, we've seen from all of the insights and um, uh, I, I, I pay a lot of attention to the markets and I get daily updates and um, annually there's the um, the UK startup report which I always look forward to and yeah. something that constantly comes out of the UK startup report is that businesses that that sort of do um, take on um, finance all of the stats show you know that the businesses have better growth they can they can employ they employ more um, members of staff, um, they, they tend to have sort of good growth rates as well. Um, so you definitely see a correlation between taking on finance and a real benefit to the business. I think there is a stigma though around the word, you know, debt. And I think a lot of that comes from maybe the personal space or maybe the personal lending space. There's sort of a fear, particularly with, as people have said, economic conditions and cost of living increase. Um, there is a sort of a stigma there, but I think it's very important to research the finance available and to almost you know, keep an open mind when it comes to business finance, because business finance is, is a very, very useful tool. Um, as I say, to chat, to, to, to sort of, channel some of that growth to sort of promote that growth um and and sometimes you know it, it it's not possible to kind of get, get give the business a fair start sometimes without that kind of you know looking around for um that support particularly with cash flow um what i would say around cost of living is that anyone who is um considering finance is really important um or especially important now to try and project ahead mm -hmm. so if you are doing your cash flow planning try and look at what a reasonable projection for cost of living increases might look like and factor that in because you you really want to give yourself the best chance of success and you know if if that on paper looks like you're taking on a little bit more debt think it through make sure you've you know you've looked at your business plan you've looked at your cash flow forecast but i would say in, in terms of cost of living don't, it, it's important not to under project because you really want to give yourself, you know, enough to cover any any increases in costs. If it is for things like purchase of stock, for example, um, I think that's really key. But I, I, th I think, you know, the, all, as I say, the stats are out there. So please, you know, do do your research. But a lot of um, a lot of the stats show that businesses kind of grow and 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 um, as I say, have a have a better sort of economic um, benefit by taking on staff, etc you know, when they can sort of borrow and, and get the business started. Um, but it's not always necessary. As I say, it's not for everyone. And it's not, um, I'm certainly not advocating that every business needs to take on some form of debt. But what I would say is it's a use, very useful tool. Um, and it should not be viewed in the, perhaps in the same lens as personal, personal debt. Mm -hmm. um, but as I say, again, um, the finance hub um, has got lots of information on this um, the report that you mentioned um, we can we can absolutely share with them um, with the audience of the, this webinar and um, the other thing I would say and I'll go on to say a bit more is we've got an op um, a partnership with the Open University um, which is called learn with startup loans 
um, and it's a collection of online courses that people can take um, to sort of gain, you do gain a certif certification from doing it, which you can share to LinkedIn and things like that. But equally, it's a, a bunch of courses. Some of them take an hour, some of them take two days to complete. So there's a real, real choice on there. Um, but a lot of those courses help with things like the sort of cash flow forecasting, um, you know, budgeting, making sure that you kind of think about things like cost of living increases as well. So business owners don't need to feel like they're alone in terms of this. There's a lot of information online and we provide, as I say, those, those um, short courses that can give people a bit more insight into business debt and what it means. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Gareth. I'm going to share now on the on the chat the uh, link that uh, Gareth just mentioned, the Learn with Starts with Loans. Um, hopefully everyone can see it. And for those of you who are watching us after this, because this episode is recorded, if you're watching us on YouTube, it should be in the description of the video. All the links will be there. But no, thank you so much, Gareth. I think this is um, super uh, important. Um, you know, um, I think, oh, great. I, I thought we uh, we lost you for a minute, but you're back. Um, I think, thank you so much, because I think it's, um, it's really great to see, um, you know, the different types of, 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 of loans that we've just mentioned, and the different types of situation. Every situation for any business owners is going to be different. Of course, you should do your own research, do, um, you know, seek, um, you, you know, um, financial advisory on your, you know, on, on your own and, and, and make sure it's the right solution for your business. But what we really want to do today is just tell you about all those solutions and tell you about all the different ways you can get more information about those solutions and how to go about, um, you know, um, you know, all the different steps to access the solution. One of the solutions we're going to talk about today is up of course, startup loans, your absolute area of expertise, Gareth. So um, talking about startup loans, um, can you give us a bit more information about it and the different benefits that it offers? Because it is more than just a loan. There is a lot of um, education around it and just uh, support available. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Val, and and we're we're really proud of the the proposition um, and the scheme, and you know the the purpose of it is really to help people furthest away from finance um, access that business funding, um, and as I said before, it is a type of of marketplace lending, so it is a loan. Um, it's a um, a loan of between five hundred and twenty-five thousand um, pounds. The average loan amount that people borrow from us is about seven and a half thousand. That's our average kind of loan size. It's got a fixed interest rate of six percent uh, per annum, and it's got a one to five year loan repayment term. And as as you say, it's a big part of it is free application support. So it's a it's um. It, it, it's not a sort of a uh, like an online application where you feel isolated from guidance and advice and it's all very sort of sort of digitized this is more of a hands-on application process so we have the free post loan support um so if you're successful in gaining the loan um there's mentorship that comes with it um to help get the business started but equally there's that pre-loan support and it's really a package of pre-loan support including um, learn with startup loans, which you've kindly shared the link to. But equally, um, you are assigned when you apply, you're given a business advisor and a business, the business advisor will, will contact you. They'll work through your application with you. If anything's missing, they'll help you locate it. They can even help you with writing your business plan and, and your cash flow forecast. So they can give really hands on um, guidance and support. And then we've also got on the Startup Loans website, we've got a load of free templates and guides um, that, that can also support <coughs> the application process. Um, and there's no, no application or setup fees for it. So it's purely the interest um, that, that's charged. And the, the, the post loan support um, is for up to 12 months. So it's really an ongoing um, <clears throat> arrangement between um, the mentor and the applicant. So we really help them, you know, sort of talk through their business goals, set an action plan and that kind of thing. Um, the, the, the scheme itself, um, <clears throat> we've, we've, we've had quite a lot of um, 
quite a lot of success so far. So we've um, we've de delivered um, loans across the UK, um, and we we've sort of we we, we tend to help. Um, individuals who, as I say, have had trouble accessing finance from um, the high street bank. So it's really about sort of if you're not um, if you're not eligible to apply with a high street bank for whatever reason, um, then you may get referred to us or you may come to us um, and we'll help you. And we, we do have, you know, different sort of eligibility criteria and um, a different application process. So um, we, we tend to have, you know, that ability to help um, applicants who, who may have been rejected by um, high street lenders. Great, thank you so, so much, Gareth. Um, I can see there's a couple of questions starting to uh, come into the Q&A. Please, please do ask your question. Uh, thank you so much, I mean, we'll, we'll get to them in a minute, just just uh, just after this, but please do continue um, for, for those of you watching us live. Um, it's a great opportunity to ask Gareth all your questions. So continue, please, to put those questions in the Q&A box. Um, I also wanted to ask you, obviously, Gareth, you've mentioned your years of experience with small business owners and you've helped countless of businesses. Um, so what are you know, how, your top tips and how can business get, uh, get ready for, for funding? Sure. Um, so I'm, I'm going to... An education gonna... process, sorry. That's, that's, that's mainly the, the question as well. What, you know, your tips for the application process. Definitely. So I'll, I'll talk uh, really practically about the startup loans application, but then I'll, I'll also talk sort of high level about things that I think are helpful to have in mind when you're when you're applying. So um, the, the startup loans application process is quite straightforward, really. So it's an online application. Um, on our website, once you've read the eligibility criteria, you can read all about the loan. Um, there's lots of information there. When you're ready, you can click apply for, for funding. Um, you'll just need to register with us and give some personal information um, and, and, and also then some business details. And once you've given that information, that's when you get handed over to a business advisor. And the business advisor um, is there to kind of guide you through the next stage of the application, which is about um, getting your business plan um, finalized and giving us a chance to review that. Um, it's also about um, forecasting your cash flow. So making sure that you've thought about um, costs, et cetera. And then we also look at your, your own finances to look at how, um, how, how sort of um, your, your personal cash flow is, because it is a personal loan for, for business purposes, the startup loan. So we will look at your personal finances as well to make sure that the repayments are affordable for you. That's the principal reason we do that. And to make sure we're lending responsibly. Um, so once we've covered those three stages, so business plan, cash flow forecast, and we call it your personal survival budget, but really it's just your, um, your affordability. Um, that's when we'll make a decision um, about the loan. And as I say, the business advisor will work with you to get all of those documents up, up to up to scratch and we'll um, request any additional information that you know we think the underwriters might need so we might ask for bank statements or proof of address and and, and the usual stuff that you'd expect from from a loan application um, and then all being sort of well we'll communicate the decision to you if it's an accept then um, we we'll sort of help um, with the, the administration of the, of the loan, we, we kind of pass it over to our finance partner and they help with drawdown. And then we make arrangements for mentorship at that point. So if that's something that you, you, know, you want to take up, it's optional, um, we, we'll help with that. If it is a decline decision, because sometimes it is a decline decision, we never like to, you know, we never like to kind of send people away with a hard no. We what we tend to do is we tend to give them pointers as to what aspect of the application needs needs more work. And as I say, we've got all of the kind of packages of support. So we might kind of say to someone, look, we really think in terms of viability, you might need to go and do a bit more market research and kind of work on your product or something like that. And then we'll guide 
guide them to learn with startup loans and there's courses about how to do market research and how to get your product up to scratch so we never like to send people away without next steps of where they where they can go and, and they can come back and reapply with us after six months so so it's never a hard um no decision um it, it, it that being said we will be really clear if we think something isn't going to work um, mm -hmm. or we can't see that something's going to work from the paperwork we'll be really frank about it but we will give that guidance on okay this is something you could try um go away and work on and then i think taking a step back so in terms of sort of high level things to have in mind i think it's never too soon to start thinking about um business continuity planning and i think covid um covid really taught taught us that uk businesses are incredibly resilient but mm -hmm. also it's good to have a plan even if it's very high level and it you know you can never you can never plan for something like a pandemic but there are sort of business principles of things that you know you can put in place really early on to give yourself that resilience and give yourself a better chance of succeeding um so i always say you know do that as early as you can um, the other thing I would say is think about, as I said before, cost of living increases. So, you know, project ahead, but also when you're projecting ahead, don't just think about cost of living increases. Think about the way the market is going in terms of sustainability. Um, and and um, we, we describe it as ESG. Um, so, you know, the environmental, social governance um, sort of aspects. Think about, you know, could you make your business more sustainable? Would it impact you if you're, you know, if you weren't putting sustainable measures in place at this stage, could that impact you down the line? You know, when, when, uh, when regulations change or when you know things get a bit stricter around sustainability practices you know are there things you could be thinking about now um, to mitigate some of that and then my final um piece of advice is plan 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 so kind of make sure that you know you've 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 really spent the time understanding your your market you understand your customers um you know that you know you've you've seen from competitors that your product's got a strong chance of of succeeding or working um and yeah and and be confident once you've planned yeah. you know you you're prepared so be confident yeah, and I, I, I'd love to do a bit more, um, and I, I, I'll ask you this after, but, you know, about the personal attitude and how to be a bit more confident as well, maybe. But mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge, uh, Gareth, incredibly helpful. And um, also, I was just... Um, I was just thinking, you know, about the different steps you mentioned, and obviously cash flow forecast is a big one. We've done an entire masterclass series with Philip King, uh, who is um, the former small business commissioner and is a cash flow expert. So if you want to go on our YouTube channel and find those episodes about really how to get your cash flow in order, that's all available on YouTube. And we've got loads of um material as well uh, on, on our blog and of course um gareth i've, I've shared the the learning hub uh, from startup loans on the on the chat as well um i can see we've got a few questions so let's uh, i think let's start with the first one um which is can you please give a bit more information about the mentorship program that comes with the loan Great question, thank you. It is a great question, yeah, and I, I'm, we're really proud of it. So I love talking about it. But um, so the the mentorship is um, it's administered by we've got scheme delivery partners. So um, they're based all around the UK. Um, some of them are really sort of uh, social enterprises, and some of them are more commercial organisations. But they've all got team members um, who can mentor you. So. The mentor sort of conversation is really around um, an introduction and understanding your needs to begin with. So we already understand your business. We're we're on you know we're on a good kind of starting block because we've helped with the application, so we know what you want to achieve. And then it's really about sitting down and kind of outlining some of the goals. So really high level talking about you know where do you want to be in the first year, first first two, first three years, and then we'll kind of help with a. Uh, planning out of a sort of an action plan, I suppose. So sort of some really practical steps, guidance, quite bespoke. So, you know, every case is is different and we'll help that um, that plan by checking in with you. So part of the mentorship is really about sort of 
having those maybe two or three set conversations over that 12 months and just checking in, making sure, you know, finding out how things are going, talking about, you know, specific challenges that have cropped up. Um, and also a, a really good feature of the startup loan is we kind of we offer um, what we call tranche drawdown. So say, for instance, you applied for our, our average loan size is 7,500. So <clears throat> say that's what you applied for, but you decided that to kind of, again, going back to this confidence around debt. Um, if you decided that you wanted to draw down, say, the first 2,500 as a tranche, you know, spend that and see how, you know, things are going and how, how impactful that is. And then if, you know, if you need to draw down the remainder, you have that option then to draw down the remaining sort of part of the tranche. So you can tranche it however you like, but it kind of limits the amount of, I guess, debt that you're, you're drawing down. Um, and then part of that mentorship conversation can be around, okay, you know, how, how is that sort of being, is it, kind of working for you are you you know is it are, is it being spent effectively um and then you know sort of helping with that decision to draw down i guess the remainder of the finance as well um so it's quite a yeah it's quite a one-to-one -one conversation and quite structured um but equally you know these are people who've got years of experience in business so they can they can really sort of you open open it's unlocking your thinking i think is the key it's unlocking the business owner's kind of thought process um, and giving a little bit of space to do that as well because it's so business is so frantic you know it, it's just taking that time to yeah to unload some of your your worries I guess as well and have someone to help you take that step back right exactly yeah shoulder shoulder some of that um yeah some of those thoughts and um, actually, I'm just going to um, answer this 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 new question from Shamim as well, and asking: Is it a must uh, that I have to take the loan to get the mentorship, or there can be other arrangements where I can get the mentorship without taking the loan? So, with our scheme, um, it is you, it is part of the loan. Um, package that being said though there are other sources of mentoring um out in the market there's sort of there's paid for mentoring um which is does what it says on the tin so you know you can go out there and you can you can sort of find a business consultant or coach that can help but also the business support helpline um is really key so the business support helpline is open to anyone and we often direct, so if our, um, if our applicants are not successful, we often direct them to the business support helpline and they help with that mentorship, um, action planning, um, et cetera. So I'd really recommend the, the, the business support helpline for that free guidance. But if you want something a bit more sort of punchy and a bit, you know, you, you do get what you, you sort of pay for. So in terms of time spent with a, with a mentor, you do tend to get more from the paid for um, coaching, but the business support helpline, you know, will give a really high standard of support as well. Great, thank you so, so much. Hopefully that, uh, I mean, that sounded very helpful. So hopefully you find this answer helpful as well. Um, just before we move on to the next question, I'm just going to launch a poll just to ask you about your thoughts on the masterclass five being, you know, the the, the highest. It, it's just on your on your screen. So so please, please um, answer, that'd be great. Now, um, let's ask, let's answer another question, which is, how can I identify the right lender? Gareth, I don't know if you if you want to take that one on. Yeah, that's, that's a tricky one. I suppose I, it, it, it's, it depends on on you, really, it's the most important kind of factor in that is, is you and your goals. Um, and, and what you're looking to achieve with finance, I suppose. So I suppose it starts by understanding your own business and what, you know, what the needs are. Um, and once you've kind of made that decision, I think it kind of then, it, it, it limits your kind of choice of lender. So you kind of, you know, once you're focused in on kind of whether you want VC or marketplace lending, et cetera, it's really looking at the terms, I suppose, then as well of the um, <clears throat> of the finance. So it's looking at, you know, who, who's offering the best rate, if it's a loan, 
you know, in terms of VC, do you need someone who's more hands-on or do you need, you know, or do you just need the investment? <clears throat> Sorry. Um, and, and, and it, it's, it's, I think in terms of um, locating the right lender, uh, that I would say, you know, the finance hub can help in, to an extent. So the British Business Bank's finance hub, um, but it will come down to preference in the end, I think. And it will come down to that sort of, the most important thing is the relationship you have with the lender. So, you know, it's usually, it's gotta be someone you trust if it's if it's in the marketplace. Um, and if it's, you know, if it's investment, it's really getting to know the investor, the company, uh, if it's VC or the angel, if it's an angel investor. Um, yeah, so lots lots to think about. Not an easy one to answer, but I think it can, it starts by by understanding your your needs and and being quite firm about what you want as well. Being quite direct about what you want. Mm -hmm. What you want out of the relationship, and what are you expecting in doing your your research to get to know what's right for your business? Um, absolutely. Um, thank you for this question, Pratik. Um, and another question, um, do you have any payment holiday for the first few months as it will take some time before the business starts making money? We, 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 we can be flexible in terms of, you know, when we start to um, take repayments. I think it's worth discussing it with the business advisor if there are specific needs. There's, as I say, there's a number of things we can do with the loan. We can tranche the loan and we can sort of look at, you know, when, when should um, repayments start to kind of give you, as, as, as they've said, that kind of that advantage of being able to sort of plan it out. Um, but we do, yeah, we do have flexibility um, on that. Great, thank you so much, Gareth. And we've got um, one last question in, in the chat. That's just to remind everyone, if you have a question, we still have a few minutes, so we'd love to take them on. Please use the Q&A box or the chat. Um, so we've got a question from Boyana. Are there any funding options for funders, businesses with less than ideal credit profile? Great question. Great. <laughs> it is a great question and an easy one for me to answer. Startup loans um, is an example of um, a funder. You know, we look at um, businesses that have struggled to get finance from the high street. Um, so, so that's part of our remit is to sort of uh, what we do, you know, is we look at the business um, the business viability we look at the affordability um and, and we also then you know we do do an element of credit check-in but we look at all three components to make a decision so it's kind of a you know, as i say a blended decision you know looking at affordability business viability and the sort of the credit profile as well but we are there for for that purpose um boyana that's part of our our remit Great. Well, thank you so, so much, uh, Gareth. This is so, so helpful. Don't know if there is any other questions. I'll just take this opportunity to paste in the um, chat box. I've, you know, put the, the links to all our events page, um, our YouTube page for all the previous masterclass I've mentioned. Um, for those of you watching us on YouTube, this will be in the um, video description, so please do check it out. And and, and just a, a reminder as well, because obviously we've we've talked um, a lot about startup loans, uh, but I just wanted to remind everyone um, that our cash flow insight tool on Tide allows you to access a range of credit option that can suit your business, which includes um, startup loans. And also we're just talking about, um, you know, credit, um, credit uh, school and we have our credit uh, builder tool as well which I've uh, pasted in in the chat um, and also I've put the um, I think I've put the link to our blog uh, if I haven't it's tight.co slash blog we've got loads of resources it's all about you know um, helping you find uh, the right solution and the right type of help for your business um, and uh, of course, you know, before entering into any loans or purchasing any credit uh, products advertised by Tide, uh, you should, you know, seek independent financial advice uh, before making any decision um, and just making sure it's the right decision for your business. So I think we both mentioned a lot of different resources that you can look into um, to really um, get to know the solution and make sure make sure you, you make the right decision for your, for your business. Um, 
I, I think um, I think that's it in terms of question. Thank you so much. These were great, great questions. Um, Gareth, I don't know if there is a last thing you want to say to our uh, viewers um, about, you know, um, you know, uh, the main you, you've already summed up the main the main uh, actions, uh, but I don't know if you wanted to remind them one last time for everyone. Yeah, I, th I think um, <clears throat> so. You, you mentioned earlier, Val, around mindset, and I think um, I, I've always been a sort of a. Uh, I've had that mantra of sort of um, fail to prepare, prepare to fail, and I think that's what where you can gain a lot of confidence is really being a good um, and effective planner. And loads of the tools that you've mentioned um, and some of the things I've mentioned today really help with that. So. I think you know the learn with startup loans um OU partnership and the tools you've you've mentioned they really help you get your head around you know how how effective is your business plan mm -hmm. how how well do you understand your you know your your cash flow um and and how can how good are you projecting you know what's going to happen to an extent and then also looking at your own sort of affordability and and really deciding what's you know what's affordable for you so i think taking all those things you know into consideration if you've really done done your work and and you've planned you know just be confident give you know give yourself that that kind of push um and go after it because you know we need small businesses to keep um our economy um healthy um and and lord knows you know lots of people are looking to get into business now um after the pandemic because people have seen how accessible you know starting a business from your kitchen can be and all all of this great stuff which i think you know is is, is kind of the future of small business i think so yeah it's been um fantastic talking to you today um about yeah some of these some of these things yeah absolutely you know thank you so so much gareth and i think what you said is so right i think um obviously we completely need small business uh for for our economy but also everyday lives um you know some of my uh best moments of interaction uh and and you know just um shopping is uh, with small businesses and I, I love to go to my locals and my small businesses so um just uh yeah just uh, congratulations to all of you that have uh you know said they were just starting or for those of you who have started and are looking to keep growing your business uh that's fantastic best of luck for um you know the future of your of your businesses and uh, thank you so much for taking the time we know we both know gareth and i how running a business is incredibly busy so thank you for taking the time to to be with us today gareth thank you as well for taking uh, the time in your busy day my pleasure uh, to share your all your knowledge thank you so so much